Konnichiwa. Bye, Jenji. Welcome back to another video, and I am here with my wife, who's been in Japan for exactly one year, and she's going to talk about 10 reasons why life in Japan was not for me. I had the chance to visit many cities, many places here in Japan, meet a lot of people, work part time, but not everything was rainbows and sunshine. There are many great things. About Japan, of course, but today I want to focus on not so great ones and things I wish I knew before coming living here. If you want to know a little more about the struggles of living in Japan, stay with us for the next 10 minutes and then find out. Let's start. Reason number one you have to know Japanese. Everyday life, you struggle like going to a convenience or going to a supermarket, you gotta know. And obviously, for those, your Japanese doesn't have to be that good, but when it comes to finding a job, you gotta know what they call keigo. I wouldn't say it's not even intermediate, you gotta be on the more fluent <laughs> level. And you had a hard time looking for a job too. So, we had a one interview、uh, opportunity, and that company,、uh, there were a lot of、uh, foreigners in that company. Company, so we thought it would be okay, and but she kept on going, going, going with a Japanese, and you freaked, freaked out. Yeah, <laughs> the part time offer I had was for foreigners, so they had in mind that your Japanese might not be perfect, and you don't actually have to talk to clients for that job. For regular, you know, full time work, you need. Fluent Japanese. So basically, the minimum kind of requirement they ask for is N2. And we are in Kumamoto in Japan, which is a local, local area. Like a Countryside area. So, job hunting situation may differ depending on where you live. And besides job, if you are married to Japanese, you need to talk to well, my family, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> family relationship here in Japan is a little different. So, like, I'm from Brazil. When you get married, you all become family and we don't have any level of formality.、Uh, that was kind of shock. For me, talking to his family, I have a hard time. Like, is it okay to say it this way? Like, should I? What would be the kego for this? Yeah. You know? Say, for example, if your girlfriend or boyfriend is Japanese、uh, who was from Tokyo, it may be easier. But my family,、uh, their accent is sometimes really、okay. strong.、Excellent. And if you talk to my grandpa, grandma, sometimes I even have a hard time understanding them. So, reason number one, you have to know your Japanese. Reason number two, it's hard to make friends. Japanese people don't easily open up to others. And on top of that, being friends with a foreigner, it, I think it's even harder for them because they're pretty self conscious about their English skills. Yeah, yeah, we are. We study a long time and then we can't even speak English. They don't teach you to speak, they teach you to write and read. Yeah, you're right about them being self conscious. Unless they're really interested. In、uh, foreign cultures and stuff, then they will be friendly with you. In general, they will be reluctant to talk to you. And my personal experience if you're in Tokyo, there are a lot of foreigners, so you can make a pact with foreigners, but we're in Kumamoto and there are <laughs> much <laughs> foreigners around here. So, in a place where the, the most people are Japanese who are reluctant to talk to you, it may be really hard to make friends in Japan.、Um, another aspect of the Japanese culture, which is Hone and Tatemai.、Uh, so, basically, Hone is Is what you really think, and tatemai is what you expect it to say and what you expect it to、um, share your opinion of. So, whatever they say, like, you don't know what they're saying is really true, or they're saying it because they're expected to say it. When you, when you understand this concept, you start thinking, okay, was that person nice because of she was expected to?、Yeah. Or was that like really came from the heart? So, it, it's really hard to tell them apart.、But、yeah, like coming from. A culture that every it, it's very easy to make friends. You're like on, waiting on the line and then you're like, hey, let's be friends. Type of thing. <laughs> so, yeah, it can get pretty lonely.、Uh, even if you make Japanese friends, the way they communicate may be really different from how you would communicate in your own country. Japanese friends among each other, we make fun of each other like really cruelly sometimes. Like, oh, you look ugly, like you're short, you blah 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 blah.、Uh, one, Making friends in Japan is hard to. When you make friends, you gotta be aware of their culture. Yeah. Differences of like jokes, how you communicate, how you show your friendship.、Mm -hmm. Reason number three. <laughs> 
Work culture. A Japanese work culture may be really different from where you're from. It can be really demanding, and hours are really long, and there is hierarchy and level of respect you have to show to your co workers and your boss. What, you, what, what is expected from you may be really different from your culture. One good thing about Japanese companies is that it's stable and you, and you typically don't get fired. So that is one good thing about working for Japanese companies.、Um, in terms of discrimination, you have one experience. I chose to. Change my name.、Uh, my name was changed after I started working. First of all, like you gotta know that in Japan they use your family name to call mainly at work since it's like strictly professional. I switched my name to, to his name, obviously a, a Japanese name. Once it, it was time to tell everyone how my like I was supposed to start being called, my boss decided, like, okay, she doesn't look Japanese enough, and they started using my first name. Well, in Japanese, Japanese companies,、uh, they typically don't call you. Call me Yohei. You know? It's always your family name. So it was clearly like, okay, you're not Japanese enough. People are gonna get confused. So you must keep your foreigner name. So let's use your first name. Because you look more like Ellen. Yeah. <laughs> Reason number four bureaucracy. Paperwork. <laughs> A lot of paperwork. To do anything here in Japan, mainly like as soon as you arrive, there's so much paperwork that you have to sign. And like we had an even harder time because of the marriage. Yeah. yeah it was a lot of stuff. Getting anything done here, credit card,、um, making a bank account, moving. It's a、oh. headache. <laughs> yeah. And, and to go through those documentation p r o c e s s you need what's called inkan, it's, which is a name stamp. If you're a foreigner and you don't have Japanese names, they don't sell those stuff. In a regular store, and like, so you have to have that customly made. Just bureaucracy, even for Japanese people, it's really m e n d o k s a i and it's and for foreigners, it's, it's even harder. Well, you went one by yourself, and to make sure that they speak English, I called them. Is, is there anyone who s p e a k English in this office? And they said, Yeah, 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 there is, if it's simple English. And then you went, and no one spoke. No、English. one spoke. And this is immigration office in Japan. Plus, Um, when we went to the immigration office, there was a situation, so there is also like discrimination.、Mm -hmm. Even like on top of bureaucracy, there is discrimination. At the immigration office, <laughs> there's a lady doing a visa renovation for his kid, I believe. She didn't have enough documentation. I understand the frustration of the officer, but at the same time, the officer was just completely rude and talking in the casual Japanese, which they probably wouldn't do. To a Japanese person. We kind of saw that looking down type of attitude from the、um, workers there. So, on top of bureaucracy, there is racism, there is language barrier. It's gonna be a little hard. Reason number five unspoken rules. In Japan, there are many, many unspoken rules that I'm pretty sure I. I don't know even half of them. <laughs> And obviously, those are important for Japan being how Japan is. Me being Japanese, I hate those rules. So,、um, if you're foreigners, you may hate even more.、Um, Some of them being gifting culture. I think one of the most shocking, I would say, was the gifting culture. So, if you travel somewhere, You're, it's almost mandatory to, to bring something for your co workers. So they even sell boxes with separate packaging for, for you to buy to give as a m i a g i f t For the souvenirs that you want to give, this is great, great right? Something that is in a business is like a business card.、Um, there's a whole rules around the business card how you receive it, how you give it, how you put it in your wallet, how you leave it on the table. For you, it's a dress code, right? Oh, yeah, dress code. Like here in Japan, we see them dressing like it's usually long sleeves, long skirts, or they dress very modestly.、Mm -hmm. And you don't really see many vibrant colors as we do in Brazil. So, whenever you wear something different, you very looked <laughs> at. In Brazil, it's a very hot country, so usually go around with wearing like shorts. Well, you can, but. People will. Take a stare. <laughs> yeah, so another thing would be the loudness, like how loud you can be in a public space. As many of you may know, like, you're not allowed to speak on the phone or like loudly to chat on the, I'd say, inside the, the subway, inside the train, you're not supposed to. People will look at you. It's not very polite, not very good.、Mm -hmm. 
in Brazil we don't have the culture of bowing obviously it's hard to uh, have a grasp of how deep you should bow like mm -hmm. I was always scared of like okay how far should I bow to show his mom that I respect her like obviously this is a phone bow and this is a oh yeah yeah, yeah. They, they, you, you do bow like when you're on the <laughs> phone <right? laughs> yeah <laughs> and you're crossing the street and you're like yeah <laughs> And also, if you're working full time in Japan, there's a whole another、um, book about working role in Japan.、Um, you cannot go home earlier than your boss does.、Uh, you don't typically say no to、uh, drinking. And in case you go drinking with your co workers and your boss,、uh, there's a whole rule like your boss is supposed to sit here, you're supposed to sit here. How old you are compared to your co workers? Oh, I'm older than him, so I'm gonna sit here. Basically, they're just Many unspoken rules, and yeah, if you want to survive, if you want to <laughs> make friends, if you want to be respected in your workplace,、uh, you have to to follow them, you have to figure out, or like maybe someone tell you.、Mm -hmm. I don't know, someone kind, <laughs> yeah. Reason number six finding job, yeah, that, that one we talked about it before, but. My experience was, I mean, I'm still unemployed, so that's <laughs> a lot about it. The, the main barrier, I would say, is the language, but all of the job offers that I saw, you gotta have at least a bachelor's degree. <laughs> a big advantage of Japan, if you have a degree, no matter what kind of degree, they don't really care about, and you can go to any area you want. My native language is Portuguese, but I'm pretty sure I, I wouldn't be able to find it if I only had Portuguese, so English is all. Also, requirement. You also have to make Japanese style resume, which is like if you don't have guidance, it, it, it may get tricky. Interviewing process, the whole thing being Japanese, you gotta grasp a lot to be able to find a job, which I'm still trying to. <laughs> Reason number seven natural disasters. I mean, Japan is pretty known for having so many natural disasters, including earthquakes, tsunami, volcano eruptions. Typhoon. Typhoon.、Mm -hmm. So basically, they have everything here. Coming from a country that doesn't have natural disasters, it's pretty scary. Like, you feel your legs shaking. <laughs> it's, so, it's so weird. I've never had experienced anything like that. And whenever it happens, you, I don't know, like, is it gonna be a big one? Should I run outside? I feel that I don't have any preparations. Like, kids here in school, they have trainings, they have all that, but I don't have anything. So it's on the back of my mind. Like, what should I do? Would I be able to react correctly? Mm -hmm. Like, would I die? It happens quite often. It's like once in two weeks. It is frequent. If you're not used to it, it may be really stressful for you. So, you gotta be ready for all those situations. For preparation, we made a video about it, so we can put it in the comments below. Reason number eight you're gonna miss your home food. <laughs> for sure. Japanese food is amazing, and no wonder I gained four kilos <laughs> when I got here. Eventually, you're gonna miss your, the food you grew up with. In Tokyo, you may be able to find some restaurants with your home country food, but be aware that. Like that, also, it's gonna be adapted to Japanese taste buds,、mm -hmm. and it's not gonna be like perfectly the same.、Mm -hmm. Us living in the countryside, there is no Brazilian restaurant here,、mm -hmm. and we have to go to Nagoya. Like, even grocery stores, they don't have many options. I don't cook any Brazilian <laughs> stuff at all here. When we find Brazilian food restaurant, it is expensive. They're not gonna have the minor food from your country, but it's just gonna be the most popular one from your country. So, depending on where you're from, it is going to be really hard for you to find your、uh, country's food. Reason number nine. Bugs. We live in a countryside and there are so many bugs. The main issue for me are the cicadas. They are Huge. <laughs> so we have a, a backyard, and I don't really even go there during summer because for sure there's gonna be semi. It's a no no for me. For me, there are a lot of mosquitoes, and I get mosquito bites because I'm blood type O, and they love O type. Cicadas, it's huge, and they pee on you, and they're everywhere. There, are, like, there is a lot of nature, a lot of insects as well. So I, if you're in Tokyo, you may not see as much. If you're in the countryside, for sure you will find. A lot of bugs. Oh, yeah, we've seen some roaches. <laughs> It was inside a cup when I turned around. 
Let's row chain side. Oh yeah. Oh. Bags. Mm-hmm. Bags. Reason number 10, PDA. <laughs> so this is also part of unspoken rules. In Japan, what you can do, what we can do, and uh, it's like hold hands. If you're on the street, that's like the highest you can go. Coming from Brazil, where PDA is something like pretty normal. It's sad. <laughs> it's actually sad. And from his, his family is a major no-no. Like in Brazil and your family, like if you're around your family and but if you don't show any affection, your family may think okay, they're not okay or like she's too cold or he's too cold towards. I don't know if I like them. Yeah, that, that's another culture shock that you may have. Like no PDA. Yeah, I mean, it may be different family to family but especially my family no PDA. Now if you want to know the good side of Japan, click this video next.